Okay, folks, we're resuming our overview of slope, and what we're going to do now is work several slope questions. Let's begin with just calculating slopes. So what we're asked to do here is to calculate the slope of the line passing through these two ordered pairs. And it's not essential that we draw a picture, but let's just kind of orient ourselves here. Here's our x-axis and our y-axis, and I could plot these two ordered pairs. For example, here would maybe be the ordered pair 3 comma negative 19. And then over here, maybe we'd have the order pair negative four comma two. So maybe negative four comma two would be right about there. And I'm not worried about being super accurate here. And our goal is to find the slope of the line connecting those two points. The reason why it's maybe worth just doing this quick sketch is it gives us an idea of what we expect the answer to be. We expect the answer to come out to be a negative slope. So when we get to the end, we should check that. You don't have to draw a picture, although I think that you know often the visual side of math complements the computational side, the analytic side of math, the algebra side of it. I think it's good to put the two together as often as you're able to. Regardless, we're going to go ahead and compute the slope, and we use our slope formula. I'm just going to remind myself that it was the ratio of rise over run. That was the change in y over the change in x. Well, I don't require you to show these two steps every single time. I really think it's a good idea to, every time you're computing a slope, to write that out. So what was our slope formula? It was y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And so in our case, we would end up with the, uh, we could pick either one of these points and call, I could call this p1 and this p2, or I could swap those out. It doesn't matter, the formula is consistent regardless of what you call your first point, which one you call your second point, as long as you keep all the labels accurate. Let's go ahead and label, uh, let's go ahead and label this as x1, and then this as y1, and then this would be x2, and this would be y2. So it doesn't matter that I called this first x coordinate x1, but once I did, everything else was then fixed. If I had called the, this x coordinate x1, then everything else would be fixed, and I have to be consistent as I do so. So we will do y2, which is in our case is 2, minus y1, which is negative 19. Now be careful here, folks. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, change the colors of these. Uh, this would be uh, 2 minus negative 19. And then uh, let's go ahead and do our denominator, which was x2, which was minus 4. And then minus from the formula, the x1 coordinate, which is uh, 3. So I just want to emphasize here and I don't need this second bottom set of parentheses, but I want to emphasize that there was a minus sign in the formula that I have to follow, as well as there being some potentially negative coordinates that I'm substituting in. And that can get you into trouble if you're going a little fast. So anyway, our numerator simplifies to be 21, and our denominator simplifies to be negative 7. And in this case, if we do the division, we end up with a slope of negative 3. And just as a quick check, we expected the slope to come out to be negative. We just found the slope of this line connecting these points to be negative 3. So folks, I'd like you to go ahead and work the remaining three examples. And I'll point out, though, that they're not always going to exist. One of these has a slope that's undefined. And you want to go ahead and notice what we said here. Uh, if the slope comes, we could have a horizontal line. The slope may come out to be 0. We could have a vertical line, in which case we say the slope is undefined. And that happens, an undefined slope, uh, whenever the two x-coordinates are the same. So I'm just warning you of that as you get started in this, that uh, this one came out to be a nice number. Uh, that won't happen for all these problems. And I'm also encouraging you to work this problem with fractions by hand. Folks in math, fractions aren't going anywhere. Um, somebody might have told you once that you could always use a calculator. That's not quite true. We need you to learn fractions for calculus. And so if you find number 19 challenging, please come by and see me, and I can help you with fractions. So I'd like you to try all three of these for your submissions, and then I want to go ahead and work number 20 with you now. So I would uh, go ahead and pause the video, answer number 17, 18, and 19, and then resume. Okay. So hopefully you've given those a shot. If you have any questions, please let me know. And let's go ahead and continue. Here I'm asking you to determine whether these pairs of lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. 
And remember that neither none of these lines that I've given you are in the slope-intercept form, which looks like this, y equals mx plus b. But notice that once I put a line into the slope-intercept form, it's possible, math people use the phrase, by inspection. Simply by looking at the equation, you can figure out what the slope of the line is. So this will be our slope. So as soon as I put it into y equals mx plus b form, it's possible to identify the slope. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. For number one here, the first equation, I'm going to go ahead and put this into slope-intercept form by isolating the value y. So subtracting three over to the other, the three x over to the other side gives me this expression, and then dividing both sides by five would give me y is equal to watch your negatives three fifths x plus two. Now I actually don't care about the entire form of this line in slope intercept form, but what am I now able to identify? I'm now able to identify the slope of that line just by inspection because it now is in the same form as our original or as our slope intercept form and we can just spot, we can just point at the slope and we see that the slope of this line is three-fifths. So let's continue. Let's look at that second line now. And for that second line, we have uh, 5x plus 3y is equal to 9. And let's go again and also now identify or isolate the y value, putting it into this slope-intercept form. This would give me y is equal to negative 5 thirds x plus 3. And so this would be the slope of the second line. And now I'm asking you to determine, now that we know what the slopes of these lines are, we're asked to determine whether these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Well, if we were to go back up to our notes from the previous video, we said that two lines are parallel if their slopes are the same, and two lines are perpendicular if the product of their slopes is negative 1. And I guess if neither of those hold, then it's neither. Well, in this case, if we were to take the two slopes and multiply them together, if we were to take 3 fifths, let me go ahead and do that uh, in red. Um, if we were to take the first slope, which was 3 fifths, and we were to multiply it by the second slope, which we found to be negative 5 thirds, what do we get as an answer? Well, we get the answer negative 1. So the lines are perpendicular. Uh, if these two lines had come out to have the same slope, we would say that the lines are parallel. And be careful here, folks, because there's I know there's one tricky one in here. Careful. If the product is not negative 1 and they are not the same, then these lines are, these non-vertical lines are neither parallel or perpendicular. What I'd like to do now is just, let's just confirm what we just saw graphically, because that's where I said that I think it's important to have both the uh, algebraic and computational knowledge down. But it's important to look at this visually and graphically as often as you can. So I want to just model that. So let me go ahead and pull up Desmos. So here I've come to Desmos. And let's go ahead and graph these pairs of lines that we were just looking at. I could put them in either form. I'm going to go ahead and use the original form. 3x minus 5y is equal to negative 10. And we're going to graph that first line in red there. And then let's do the second line, which was 5x plus 3y, which was equal to 9. And there I've graphed that second line in blue. And what we see is that these two lines, one, they intersect. That's kind of interesting. And maybe a question for another class or another day is, where, do, where is that point of intersection? But I also want to point out that the intersection of these two is at a 90 degree angle. And that's uh, graphically or visually, that's what we mean when we say two lines are perpendicular. What did we mean? When we said that two lines were perpendicular algebraically, what we mean is that the product of their slopes is negative 1. But that corresponds to what you usually think of when in everyday, when in everyday lingo you say two lines are perpendicular. You mean that they intersect at 90 degrees. And verifying that their slopes product, when you multiply the two slopes together, gives you negative 1 is a way of checking that. I'll also mention, because some of you have done it before, that in other classes you might have said two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. If I were to take the reciprocal of 3 fifths, I would get 5 thirds. 
And if I were to multiply 5 thirds by a negative 1, I'd get the slope of this line. So that fits with the way maybe you've heard it before. So folks, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to try the remaining three problems. Uh, I'll give you a hint. One will be parallel, one will be perpendicular, and one of them will be neither. But I'd like you to go ahead and practice that. I'm not going to give you the solutions to that. Uh, I feel like you should be able to do that. But if you have any trouble, please come by and see me. I'd be happy to help you with it. All right, folks, thank you for your patience, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.